Congratulations. By being elected to the 46th Parliament, you have reached one of the pinnacles of democratic participation in this country. You'll have to think about a lot of legislation. Most will relate to three key pillars of our society, law and institutions, people, land and resources. I want to make a plea for the fourth pillar, the one that helps the others remain strong. That is culture. Culture is key to ensuring that all Australians are able to actively participate in a lively democracy where freedom of speech and the media is valued and information is readily available and competing ideas are respectfully explored. Supporting culture will mean we can better hear our stories, learn our history, create and participate. In the age of Facebook, Google, Netflix and Amazon, this is more important than ever. Over the term of this parliament, we will need new laws to make sure that we continue to hear and enjoy our distinctive voice. Too often culture is reduced to a simplistic jingoistic slogan or talked about as though it were a battleground where people with different points of view are at war with each other. Culture is much more than this. It's the diverse heritage we celebrate, including the oldest living indigenous cultures on the planet, the stories we share, the art, music, books and performances we enjoy, and those that provoke us to see things differently. The language, indeed languages we speak, the exceptional creative talent we celebrate, and the many layers of identity that define us and ensure we are able to live fulfilled and interesting lives. Having just come through the election process, you know how rich and diverse this is, and how important the cultural values of a fair go, freedom of speech, respect, tolerance and opportunity are to Australians. We all accept that our institutions, land and people need to be nurtured and made more resilient. But sometimes we tend to think that culture will just look after itself. It won't. And this is where you come in. By comparison with defence and social welfare and health and the other big budget areas, culture doesn't cost a lot. But it is not free and is not something that the market alone can take care of. To grow and reach its full potential, it needs attention and support. Its value is measurable and tangible. We can calculate this with data and economics, but also in terms of social cohesion and belonging, in how citizens can thrive if they are better able to make sense of the changing world in which we live by having access to information and art. In this digital age, we need to find new ways to make sure that our stories can still be heard that our talented creatives are able to realise their full potential. To make this possible, we need robust and well-funded national institutions, galleries, broadcasters, theatres and museums. We need bookshops, libraries and screens filled with the best works we can produce, as well as the best from around the world. I encourage you to embrace new ways to support the cultural pillar, so our stories, from the dreaming to the most contemporary, can be shared. In the heat of the election campaign, you heard people telling stories and sharing their experiences. No doubt some touched you and made you think. By making the creation of an even richer, more open culture a priority, you can help create a legacy that will outlast even the 46th Parliament. That is my challenge to you.